Yo, today we're going to be talking about a mineable project that also has staking and they also have something called hotspots, but they are not like a Wi-Fi hotspot exactly that you may be familiar with, nor are they exactly like a helium hotspot. Yet this is a cryptocurrency project with their own token and they have also deployed NFTs. So they are really hitting on many things that make cryptocurrency interesting and where this project became interesting to me was kind of pivoting my interest from helium into a comparable cryptocurrency that even has a similar token ticker helium hnt and their laura mining and then now enter ycrypt and their wnt token they claim to be the smart wi-fi network powered by the people for the people which may sound very familiar to the people powered network like Helium, which in recent times has proven to be people powered, but maybe not so much exactly for the people. <laughs> Regardless though, HNT has held a pretty strong price position and even just valuation, maintaining a market cap over $1 billion, even in this, these market conditions where many different cryptocurrencies have pulled back. Most coins have pumped at least 10% today, HNT included, which is a good sign. Ycrypt, a microscopic coin in market cap comparison with not even a $1 million valuation per coin gecko here on their WNT token. But again, what, what exactly is going on here with WNT? So let's start with the most interesting part to me, and that's going to be hardware. Plug, play, and earn is their tagline here. So they have the links. It's a small battery powered device that can maintain up to 50 concurrent client connections. Then they also have the Spider. The Spider is a high capacity device without an internal battery and can maintain up to 70 concurrent client connections. This is designed with 3G, 4G high speed internet access in mind. Where the Lynx boasts 4G support right here, but looking at the actual device G details, it also supports 3G as well as 4G there. This is particularly interesting in areas where you're dealing with power cycling issues. Basically, you don't have 24 seven uh, electricity. That is something that, say, I take for granted compared to some others. One person who is negatively impacted by that is going to be Bryn. Bryn is one of our video editors and he is actually based out of South Africa. He is incredibly negatively impacted by power cycling. Ycrypt also has more devices deployed in Africa than any other area right now. So Ycrypt sent me the Lynx and Spider to test. I sent it to him because he's in a position to appreciate these more than I could. The easy to think of clickbait title and really just position to take on a video review or something like this would be like, oh, the next helium. But no, I'm not gonna say that this is that, but I will say that to be honest, it, it does interest me. There are some things that some people would definitely initially push back on though. Like they're based out of Nigeria and I don't mean to stereotype, but there's that stereotype to Nigerian equals scammer. That's not true. That's not the case, right? Sure, there are Nigerian scammers, but that doesn't mean that everyone Nigerian is a scammer. We fight a lot of scammers and impersonators here on the channel that constantly try to fish and scam our community by impersonating us. We've actually tracked most of them back to Nigeria. Personally, I just wanted to address this because I know that this is a common stereotype, at least here in the United States. And just because it's a stereotype doesn't mean it's right, nor do I agree with it. Another thing of note is that Ycrypt is a Polygon token. It's on the Matic network, right? That means cheap transaction fees, cheap to deal with NFTs, and their NFTs are easy to buy and sell given massive support for the Polygon blockchain for, on things like, say, OpenSea. But why would you even want or care about an NFT in relation to this project? Well, I brought up Bryn and how we sent the devices to him. He's actually going to be the host for the rest of this video with his in-depth analysis, review of Ycrypt, and of these two devices. Bryn's been helping me edit videos on this channel for over a year, so please give him a warm response in the comments. Don't flame the man. He does a pretty solid job.
So you might have seen us previously cover the Ycrypt miners uh, in this video over here, you can see uh, we did do some brief coverage, but that was before we had received the miners in. So now we've got both of them in hand, it's time to take a look at what they can do. So the Ycrypt miners are essentially hotspot sharing devices that allow you to share an internet connection and profit from it. So you can set them up with uh, internet either through ethernet or a data sim card that allows you know connectivity via 4G. Unfortunately they don't have a 5G variant just yet so you'll just be using your basic internet connectivity with a sim card through 4G and once they're set up you can allow users to connect and you can earn while they use the connectivity. For the unboxing experience, I must admit, they are really nice hexagonal boxes. You can take a look over here. We've got both in, so we have the Lynx. This is the smaller, uh, more compact version. It runs on a battery. Let me actually grab it. Got it here. Uh, it, runs on a, it runs on a battery and uh, it allows you to then connect with a SIM card. You can put the SIM card in. So once you've turned it on, you can see the four lights have come on over there. You do have an option to charge it through power, a USB-C power adapter at the bottom. Uh, it does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is really nice. I think that especially since it's so small, compact, won't really run much power, you'll get a lot of hours of usage out of it. The Lynx is personally great for here in South Africa, where we have rolling blackouts, which are called load shedding. And with load shedding, basically our power will be scheduled to turn off for two and a half hours at a time. And then if you do not have backup, uh, you know, like a backup UPS for your internet, this makes an, a great alternative to just be able to connect a data SIM card and allow you to share your hotspot and uh, be able to use the internet while your power is out. Then you also have the Spider. Now this is the more kind of industrialized version. You, you can see it comes with uh, the four antennas which allow for a broader range of connectivity. Uh, the Spider allows up to 70 concurrent users while the Lynx only allows 50. Uh, so your Spider is definitely for a more broad uh, user, user base. Um, for example, an ex uh, a cool idea that would be you know, pretty practical to use it would be perhaps a university where students require internet connectivity, especially here in South Africa. Uh, students need to connect to the internet and sometimes the university's internet is very unreliable. And so to set this up, you know, maybe get permission from a university, set it up, allow users to connect to its internet uh, connectivity. And uh, then you'd be able to profit from, you know, uh, almost a business. You could create a, essentially what is a business based around these uh, sharing uh, capabilities. Just to allow some connectivity consistency, I can connect the spider directly to my uh, internet connection. It also requires a power source, a 12 volt power, you know, adapter, a very basic. Thankfully, it came with one uh, in the box that is the correct plug type for South Africa as well. So I don't need to go out and buy an adapter or anything, but just in case you are perhaps in the European regions or America, uh, you would need to buy an adapter just to be able to uh, get the connectivity right or you could use a very basic 12 volt um, connector that has the universal uh, back connector, that round uh, connector. Um, I must admit the unboxing experience was really nice. Uh, they are very high quality. I was very surprised. They are really, really nice quality on par, even with like my Bobcat unboxing uh, you know, experience. Very nice, soft interior. And uh, yeah, actually that leads me to my next point, which is that these aren't to be confused with helium miners. So although they are hotspot sharing devices, they are not helium hotspots. They don't allow, uh, you know, connectivity to the helium blockchain and they're not an IOT sharing network. They are an internet sharing network. So you have to have internet connectivity with these devices and then share that connectivity to others who want to connect via Wi-Fi or in the case of the spider connect even via ethernet cable. So they are not helium compatible. Maybe they will introduce that at some point. Uh, there is no confirmation or anything along those lines. Uh, so for now, they are essentially just allowing you to create a business around sharing your internet connectivity. They even have a fantastic dashboard which allows you to create ads that you can run to show to um, you know your users. So you could profit from that as well. You could get businesses on board to show ads, you know, they would use you almost as a marketing form. You could charge them monthly or per ad or whatever, and then you show those ads to your users. 
uh, when the users connect to the, uh, the network. So I've ordered my data SIM card for my Lynx miner already. And once that is done, then I will connect them and allow them to start mining and see if I can earn some WNT tokens. They have the Ycrypt token WNT, which is based on the Polygon blockchain. And then you can also earn from the uh, direct money that is given to you from your users who connect to the internet. So they will purchase vouchers from you and those vouchers allow them certain amounts of data connectivity and so forth. Uh, this is all just what I've seen from the dashboard so far. I haven't set it up connected to it and everything like that already uh, yet. So we'll see once we get to that point. But for now, I'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> Yo, I'm back. <laughs> it's been a couple of days. Turns out we had some issues. But thankfully, managed to get them sorted. Uh, hopped on a call with the developers and the founders. And we sorted it out really quickly. Uh, turns out... It was just a problem with the review unit that we were sent. So nothing major, nothing too big. Uh, after just fiddling around through the settings for a little bit, managed to solve it, get it connected, up and running, and everything is going smoothly. After that, I was added to a Jumpstart community uh, Telegram group, which is made up of like hotspots or like device owners, as well as uh, very transparent and, and open developers and founders. My only concern is that the units are a little pricey, uh, starting at a thousand dollars and one and a half thousand dollars respectively, uh, which is quite a lot to you know jump in on. Uh, even at most, you know the uh, helium miners uh, to obviously not make too much of a comparison. Uh, helium miners were four hundred, five hundred dollars, some seven, eight hundred dollars at peak. Uh, but now that everything has come down, you know, prices are, you're able to get them for like two, three hundred dollars uh, second hand and used. With this, uh, unfortunately, you're going to pay a premium, uh, which leads me to even the, the next point, which is how you can acquire these devices. So the way in which you uh, buy them is actually through NFTs, which is a really interesting integration. And I think it's an integration that the team is using to prevent, uh, you know, gamification and people adding their own devices and so forth. It really keeps a, a rein on how many devices, what devices go out and so forth, uh, which is good in a sense. Um, it allows the network to grow uh, until maybe one day they might want to decentralize. But it's really nice to see that they're protecting the network by ensuring that you have to purchase a device through an NFT or you can purchase through one of their verified uh, sellers, which also makes it uh, easy for them to keep track of which devices are going where. Uh, you can actually even check uh, devices, very similar to the Helium Explorer actually, uh, almost identical. You can hop on at scan.ycrypt.com. That's their Explorer, which gives you, you know, information about their uh, blockchain, the amount of devices that are currently online, and how many rewards have been distributed over the last 30 days, 24 hours, etc. So in order to earn with the Ycrypt Niners, you need to have, if I'm not mistaken, you need to have staked uh, the WNT token, uh, which I have unfortunately not done. Uh, upon my two attempts to do so, uh, you know, it was a pretty insignificant amount of, of Ycrypt token, uh, but the fees were pretty ridiculous. Um, I mean, at both times, uh, totaling close to two Matic uh, to pr complete just the single transaction, which is pretty crazy. And uh, yeah, so I haven't staked, so I'm not earning at the moment, but uh, after making, you know, uh, some plays or some trades, you could uh, get into a good position with the WNT token, stake it up and earn some uh, APR on it, uh, as well as allow you to earn with your devices. If you're investing obviously into this ecosystem, you will 100%, uh, you know, go, th go that route. Their token has performed pretty much identically to uh, other cryptocurrencies, as you would expect. May 2021, huge boom, all-time high set. Since then, you know, the long and slow decline into the bearish trend that currently consumes us. Currently, they're sitting at about $0.05 cents with an all-time high well over $0.25. Cents. So that's a good 4x from where we are now if you were to get in, uh, if you, you know, what choose to... Uh, purchase the token, choose to invest in the ecosystem, which this is not financial advice. Please make sure to consult a professional. We are not professionals. You know how Vosk does it, but I'm doing it this way today. Yeah, the, the daily volume, unfortunately, is a little low. Uh, it's around $100,000, which is pretty, pretty decent uh, for a small project. 
but with the amount of rewards uh, distributed even in the last 30 days of like seventeen thousand uh, dollars there's a pretty big community that is is clearly being formed by these uh, these devices and this ecosystem which is very cool to see another cool feature that i, I realized while going through the process um, was that you actually can't mint a device so you can't purchase the device uh, with usdt or usdc you can't purchase it until you've entered your details so that is great in that it prevents you from uh, you know purchasing this device that <laughs> can't ship to you and you're left just holding this nft that you know might or might not be worth something but yeah with only 500 devices out there in the wild it's good to know that they're making progress uh manufacturing and distributing uh, but you can see it's still a very small ecosystem that has a lot of room for growth Despite the issues that I had uh, with the review units, obviously, you know, that's that's partly because of the fact that they were review units. If you were to get these out of the box, you know, unboxing experience, as I've mentioned before, is great. It, it really is top quality, a uh, little pricey, unfortunately, to get in. I think it would take quite a while to make back that money. Uh, if you were to, you know, start something, you'd have to really have a good plan on how you want to, you know, loan out uh, loan out or essentially sell data, sell ads, all of those kind of things. Uh, you'd really have to go through a, a, a very well thought out plan to ensure that you are actively taking steps to make your money back. And just doing some, you know, light math, uh, in order to make back your full $1,000, if you were to invest in just the links, uh, to make back your $1,000, you'd have to earn around 19,000 WNT tokens. That's quite intense considering that over the past 30 days, the network entire in its entirety has made and distributed about 320,000 tokens. So there is quite a barrier towards, you know, making your money back and, and becoming profitable. Uh, if you're looking at it like a helium miner investment where, you know, you would set up your miner, uh, you would get a better antenna, make sure that you're uh, ensuring good positioning and just making that HNT, you know, that sweet HNT back and then selling it, dumping it, hodling it, whatever, until you make back your device cost in order to break even. Uh, if you're thinking about doing that with these uh, devices, I think it might not be the best route in order to make your money back, but you can refer people, you can set uh, agents up as kind of like managers, I'd imagine, for your network uh, who can manage devices and they then uh, their details are kept on your app so you have access to it so it's it's a very smooth user, ex user experience and uh, the app works just as expected um, the devices as well uh, the signal is very strong from the spider that i have set up just here um, i get fantastic coverage around my entire house so from wall to wall i have great great coverage full uh, coverage actually from my uh, wi-fi connection that it's connected to Whereas my router actually doesn't even give me that. So I'm using it as my Wi-Fi, you know, router because it gives me better quality connection. So yeah, those are the YCrypt devices, the Lynx and the Spider. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, as they grow, keep an eye on the project. Uh, I think that blockchain technology in Africa as a whole is still very, very, uh, very new and just taking roots. So if they are able to kind of gain traction, gain awareness, uh, build a bigger market within uh, the continent, I think it would be really cool because there will be very little competition. Uh, their services, uh, such as the data sharing model, I think work really well within disadvantaged countries found in Africa, where data might be expensive and access to the internet might also not be ubiquitous just yet. So they have really got a, a kind of packaged deal if you are looking to become uh, and a service provider within the network space. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on them. And uh, yeah, that's that. those are the YCrypt devices. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Be sure to smash the like and subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. If you've watched the video all the way till here, thank you so much. Uh, this is kind of my uh, debut, so I'm a bit nervous, but uh, it's great to know we have such an engaged community and, and such a, an awesome community uh, with Voscoin. So, I don't know if I'll see you guys again soon, but I know you guys will see Vosk tomorrow since we're uploading daily. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers.